Hello everyone, in this video we're going to draw a meadowlark. Start by drawing a circle as a guide for the front part of the body. To draw the circle, first make two small marks to indicate the circle's length, and then on the sides make two more small marks to indicate the circle's width. Then connect the marks using curved lines to finish the shape of the circle. Sketch lightly at first so that it's easy to erase if you make a mistake. Also, pause the video to draw at your own pace. The circle doesn't have to be perfect, but if you're having trouble drawing it, just trace the outer edge of a coin, a bottle cap, or anything else with a circular edge. On the bottom left side, make a small mark as a guide for the back portion of the body. Pay attention to how far away this mark is from the circle. Now connect a small mark to the circle using curved lines to finish the back portion of the body. The shape of this guide should be similar to an arc on its side. On the top right side, draw a smaller circle as a guide for the head. Use the 4 marks method to draw this circle too. First make 4 small marks to indicate the sides of the circle, and then connect the marks using curved lines to finish the shape of the circle. The head circle should be about half the size of the body circle. Inside the head, draw a vertical line. This is a construction guide that will help you place the facial features later on. Now draw a horizontal line for another construction guide. On the right side of the head, draw a long thin triangular shape as a guide for the beak. First, draw a line that slopes down on the right side. Below that, draw another line that slopes down on the left side. Pay attention to the size of this shape in relation to the head. Under the back portion of the body, draw a long sloping line as a guide for the leg. Bend the top part of the leg to indicate the joint. At the bottom, draw a short horizontal line as a guide for the foot. Connect the head to the body using two curved lines to create the guide for the neck. The line on the right should be longer and more curved than the line on the left. On the bottom left side of the body, draw a big triangular shape as a guide for the tail. The tail is made of two sloping lines that come together on the left side. And that's it for the guidelines. Now let's start on the final drawing. Inside the head, lightly sketch a small circle for the eye. Place the eye on the top right side of where the construction guides intersect. Pay attention to the size of the eye in relation to the head. When you get the size and position of the eye right, darken the shape. Inside the eye, off to the side, draw a tiny circle for a highlight. In the middle of the eye, draw a slightly bigger circle and shade it in for the pupil. Now draw a series of short curved lines around the eye for the bare skin. Keep these lines close to the shape of the eye. Now use the triangular shape on the right side as a guide to draw the beak. First, darken the top edge of the guide to create the top part of the beak. Lightly sketch a horizontal line across the middle of the shape for the mouth. Draw the left side of the mouth close to the eye and curve it downward slightly. When you get the shape of the mouth right, darken the line. Inside the top part, draw a tiny oval for the nostril and a short stroke for a groove. Now darken the bottom edge of the guide for the bottom part of the beak. Keep the tip of the beak pointy. On the left side, draw a series of short strokes for the feathery base of the beak. Now darken the top edges of the guides to create the top part of the head. The top part of the head should connect to the top part of the beak. 
Under the beak, follow the basic path of the guidelines to create the neck. Add a few short strokes within the section of the throat for some feathers. Draw a few short strokes to the left of the eye for the pattern on the feathers. Add a few short strokes above the eye too. Now use the long line under the body as a guide to draw the leg. First, draw a series of short strokes around the top part of the guide for the feathery base of the leg. Now draw the bottom part of the leg around the guideline. Keep the edges of the leg close to the guideline so that the shape is thin. Sketch lightly at first and only darken the leg when you get the shape right. Now draw the shape of the foot and toes around the guideline at the bottom. On the left side, draw a thin curved shape for the toe that points backward. On the tip of the toe, draw a curved pointy shape for the nail. Sketch lightly at first and only darken the toe when you get the shape right. On the right side, draw another toe the same way but make it longer. In the middle of the shape, draw a short sloping line for a smaller toe. At the top, draw another sloping line for the last toe. To the right, draw the visible portion of the other leg the same way. This leg is basically made up of a sloping line that's parallel to the first leg. At the bottom, draw a horizontal line for the visible toe. On the right side of the toe, draw a curved pointy shape for the nail. On the left side, draw a short shape with a curved pointy tip on the left side for the backward pointing toe. Now lightly sketch a long curved line across the entire body for the folded wing. The bottom of this line should be close to the base of the leg. When you get the shape and position right, darken the line. The top of the wing should be directly on the edge of the very first circle. Draw a series of short strokes along the top for some feathers. Draw a series of short curved lines across the middle of the wing for more feathers. The row of feathers in the middle should be slightly longer than the feathers at the top. Each feather should be similar to the letter J or a check mark. Use the remaining lines and shapes as guides to draw the rest of the body. Simply darken the outer edges of the guides to create the shape of the body. The edges of the body should be made up of long continuous lines. Don't overlap the base of the leg as you draw the underside of the body. Use the triangular shape on the left side as a guide to draw the tail. Add a few short strokes along the bottom of the guide for the small feathers on the tail. Draw the thin tail within the shape of the guideline. The tail is made up of short sloping lines. Add a couple more sloping lines within the shape for individual feathers. Now go over the final lines with a pen, a marker, or any other type of permanent ink. The next few steps are sped up so that the video won't be too long. Take your time and be careful when you ink your drawing to avoid any accidents. Don't ink the initial guidelines, only the final drawing. When the ink dries, erase all of the guidelines. Now draw the feather pattern all over the body using permanent ink. Draw a couple of thin stripes on the head and a thicker stripe on the chest. Now draw a series of smaller stripes, spots, and streaks all over the body for the rest of the pattern. If you'd like, you can add the pattern using pencil first so that it's easy to erase if you make a mistake. Draw slightly longer markings on the back and under the wing. It's a good idea to use reference as you ink for a more accurate depiction of the feather pattern. 
Now color your drawing. Use different shades of brown for the top part of the body. Blend in different shades of brown like light brown, dark brown, and even a bit of red and orange. Color pushing down lightly at first and then gradually push down harder to blend in the colors. For a simpler drawing, just use a single shade of brown for the top part of the body. Use brown to color the eye too, but don't overlap the tiny highlight circle. Color the beak using shades of gray and black. Leave the top part of the beak blank for a highlight. Use a bit of light brown on the underside of the body to create shadows. Now color the underside of the body using different shades of yellow. Add a bit of gray streaks on the head and use light brown and peach for the legs. Add a bit of black to the feather pattern. Leave a few sections on the head blank for the white feathers. Add a shadow at the bottom using gray. This grounds the metal lark so that it doesn't appear to be floating. Keep coloring until you're happy with the result. And that's it for the metal lark. Don't forget to pause the video to draw at your own pace. Also, please visit howtodrawanimals.com where every step of this tutorial is broken down into an individual image. That's how, and then the number two, then drawanimals.com. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and a comment. Also, subscribe for more videos in the future. Thank you for watching, and until next time, keep drawing.